Suzanne Pillay was a 38-year-old woman. She worked as a bookkeeper in the city centre of Edinburgh. She was a very outgoing person. Um, she had a large circle of friends and she was really close to her family. But on the 4th of May 2010, Suzanne failed to show up for work. It was completely out of character and police were soon called. We were able to piece together our, our last movement. We were able to establish that a neighbour had seen her leaving the house just after seven. Through our bus passes, we were able to establish that she had taken a bus, two buses, into the city centre. She had left the bus in the city centre, which was normal. She had gone to a, lo a local Sainsbury's purchase some breakfast, a yoghurt, and we were able to watch her walking across St Andrews Square and disappearing um, round the corner. The last camera is just a matter of 60 metres from her door. There's a void space between two cameras and that's where the front door to her office is. We could establish if she hadn't continued past her work, if she hadn't returned, uh, we, she hadn't gone straight over into another street. If she had done so, we'd have been able to see her in CCTV. So Suzanne must have made it to work that day. But how could she have got that close and not arrived at her desk? Police delved further. They started to look at emails and it became very clear very quickly that Suzanne was having a relationship. David Gilroy was a, a colleague, very effective at work. He was a problem solver. He was highly regarded within the office. He was a married man with two children and uh, he was clearly in a relationship with Suzanne and no one else in the office knew anything about it. It became apparent from family and friends that Suzanne was determined to end the relationship. What was she dressed like? Where was she going? What kind of... When officers came to speak to her colleagues the day after she disappeared, Gilroy was out of town at a meeting. He was asked to come to a police station when he returned to Edinburgh. It was 11pm uh, when he finally got to the police station. Yeah. I've had to not be at work and for no one to know where she was. When the officers finished the interview, they noticed marks in the back of uh, Gilroy's hands. It said that they'd been as a result of gardening. She's been wearing a pair of gloves. He was asked if he would come in the following day to have those marks photographed. The officers dealing with him realised he had concealer, some sort of makeup, which there immediately they felt was, you know, unusual, suspicious. When they checked, there was no sign of any gardening having been done at Gilroy's house. It was at that point that we realised that Gilroy was a suspect. In the three weeks before Suzanne vanished, Gilroy had called and texted her 450 times. Hi Suzanne, it's David here. Hi uh, Suzanne, I was just wanting to have a chat. Hi David, um, have a chat. Um, we can spot everything out. Um, I think most of us probably pushed things a bit too far. Yeah, I'll try again a wee minute, bye. But on the day she went missing, all the calls stopped. CCTV also showed Gilroy had taken the bus to work that day, arriving shortly before Suzanne. He had logged onto his computer, but was away from his desk for an hour. Later, he returned home and picked up his car, driving it back to the office's basement. But the key evidence came from specialist police dogs brought in to search for traces of a body. In three distinct areas, they gave a reaction to their handlers. <coughs> the area under the stairwell, an area leading from the stairs, and that is a short distance to a fire door, and beyond the fire door into the garage itself. The dogs also reacted when they examined the boot of Gilroy's car. Police believe they now had a picture of what happened to Suzanne Pilly. David, 
That morning, he's been there waiting and Suzanne arriving. It was clear that Suzanne had ended the relationship. There's, there's, there's nothing you can say. And clear that he didn't want the relationship to be over. It's over. And down in the basement, he's murdered Suzanne. And all his actions after that are about covering up. Detectives were sure Suzanne had been murdered. But what had Gilroy done with her body? One of the first things that Gilroy did when he went back to his computer was to create a diary entry, to create an excuse uh, for him to travel to Argyle the next day. The cameras travelling from Edinburgh across to the west coast of Scotland were giving us images, um, intermittent images, of his vehicle travelling along that route. One particular section of the journey stood out, where Gilroy could not be traced. In both directions, he turned his mobile phone off, and a distance that should have taken 37 minutes took him more than two hours. There was no doubt he was trying to hide where he was travelling. It was clear that Gilroy had left the road. He's travelled through the Argyle Forest, during which time he's had ample opportunity to dispose of Suzanne's body. Despite extensive searches in Argyle, Suzanne's body has never been found. Nevertheless, in April 2012, David Gilroy was handed a life sentence for Suzanne Pilly's murder. The investigation will never be closed until Suzanne's found. Utterly heartbreaking. It is absolute torture for them not knowing. Gilroy refuses to say, he refuses to accept his guilt, he's appealed twice. It is sickening what he's still putting the family through. At trial, the judge uh, praised the investigation. Yes, a murder case without a body is as tough as it gets. It was all about detail. For example, when he moved the body, the CCTV shows his car arrive at work. There's nothing on the back shelf. When you next see the car, you get a glimpse of an umbrella because, of course, he's emptied the boot to put Suzanne inside. After he dumps the body, the umbrella is back in the boot. Now, that spot came from five frames of CCTV, less than a second in real time. Astonishing work. It really is. Uh, and the search, importantly, continues. It does, but they need help. It is a massive area. They are focused on the rest and be thankful part of the forest. It was the day before the last general election. Did anyone see a silver Vauxhall Vectra? The key times are between 1 and 3.30 in the afternoon, 7 and 9 in the evening. We heard Suzanne's mum say it's as if nobody loved her being left out there. Well, she was loved, loved hugely, and they're desperate to get her back. Indeed, Matthew, thank you very much. Yeah. 